Hey there, hi, welcome to the channel. I am Garrett and in this video, we are talking all about some basic living room interior design mistakes. Yes, we are bringing back and revamping this series. So be sure you share with me in the comments section, what is the next space you wanna hear all about the mistakes you're making and the basic design principles for it. Now the first thing we absolutely have to talk about when it comes to a living room is the rug placement. Now, I think this depends on the living room layout you choose. I actually have an amazing living room layout video that I will link up here in the cards and in the description box down below for you. But rug placement makes a difference in a living room. Interior designers always say, put all of your furniture on a rug. And that definitely does feel more luxurious. That's what I have in my living room right now. But it depends on the layout you choose. If you have a sofa and chairs flanking each other, that works and it looks beautiful. It also depends on the amount of space you have. If you have a large enough room where you can do that and it makes sense, that works also. If your sofa's pushed against a wall, I don't think the rug needs to go all the way under it and be touching the wall. The next thing you can do is have some of the legs of the furniture on that rug. And I like this. I think it builds a little bit of character. If you're layering rugs, like let's say you're taking a natural fiber, like a sisal rug, and you're putting an antique or a vintage wool rug on top of that, that can be really cool and look good. But you want to make sure your furniture is sat on both of the rugs somewhat so that they stay in place and you don't get shifting. Same thing happens with an area rug over wall-to-wall -wall carpet. I don't personally like it and don't recommend it because it's kind of redundant. Redundant, I think you're better off focusing on the layout in a space that has wall-to-wall -wall carpet. I think there are better things you can do than put just a area rug over wall-to-wall -wall carpet. And if you're interested in some of those things, I'd recommend checking out that layouts video because I think that's the strongest point you can make to define a space. There are lots of creative solutions you can use when it comes to finding a rug. It's all about the fit of it and the way it blends with everything you have. If you're using a sectional in a living room, I think that's fantastic, but you don't have to have a rug that goes all the way underneath it either. You want to choose a rug that goes under both sides of it the same dimension or proportion. It might hang off on one side. I'd say choose the side that is more open to the space, isn't backed in a corner, and you can put an end table, a side table, a cantilevered floor lamp could be cool there also. There are so many great rugs out there and so many different sizes available, but if you can't find the perfect size for you, consider getting a rug that maybe doesn't have a pattern and you can actually have that cut down and bound to be the perfect size for you, or you can even do a sneaky little take on it where you go and get wall-to-wall -wall carpet cut down to size and have the edges of it bound to be the perfect size in your living room. A bigger rug always makes a room feel luxurious, but if you're in a smaller space, a bigger rug might actually make it look a little smaller. So you definitely wanna try some things out. And I would also recommend taping out the size of your rug to see what it will really look like in your space. Figure out the placement of your furniture before you order that because rugs are not inexpensive. They're not easy to lay down and they're not easy to roll back up and ship back to somebody else. So you don't want to be involved with that. Be sure you're getting the right thing the first time or the right size for that matter because it can truly make a difference and a rug is a designer's best friend. Now, I know decorating can be hard. Sometimes your mind just doesn't work that way and you're not the person that is like, you know, trained to think about aesthetics and the interiors in your home. And if you're that person, well, I'm not and I am at your service. You can always book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me to discuss any and all of your decorating needs, no matter if it's your living room, your dining room, your kitchen, or whatever that space is, using the link in the description box down below or going to intro.co slash Garrett Lachique. Rugs are great and they make a space look beautiful and luxurious. And I personally can't relate to some struggles because like I always look good no matter what, but some spaces and some people look better at night or in the dark. So you should get some lamps for that space to create a warm and welcoming glow. That's the next big mistakes I see is people just underestimate the importance of lighting and lamps in a space. The easiest way to create a good soft lighting scheme in your living room is to put a lamp at every corner. That immediately creates a softness and a glow that makes a space feel inviting. Spaces just look warmer at night when you have a dim and moody lighting situation happening. And you can achieve that by having multiple smaller light fixtures in your space. And it doesn't just have to be lamps. That's the easiest way to create this kind of glowy vibe or moment. 
You can do art light, picture lights, wall sconces. You can have floor lamps. You can have table lamps. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite things is to layer interesting items or elements together in an unexpected way, like an organized chaos type thing and beautiful clutter. I love that. So what I do in my home is I'll take one of these chairs, I'll put a coffee table book on it to give me a nice flat surface, and then I'll put a lamp on it to create that layered effect. That's something that works with my personal style, and maybe it works with yours, and I think that's great. Something else to consider when it comes to lighting is your overhead light. Put it on a dimmer switch. I like warm tone lighting. 2700 is my go-to number. If it's in a kitchen or somewhere we need a lot of light, maybe then you bump it up into the 3000s, but that's the that's the highest I'll go. A living room is not a place for like cool tone light or having a ton of really bright lights. Save it for the kitchen, save it for the bathroom. The living room is all about warmth and relaxation. So having, you know, really a ton of cool tone lighting is not gonna get you that fantasy. You also, of course, want to have natural lighting. I always say have at least three alternative sources of lighting. Not your overhead fixture, not the daylight coming in. I'm looking at my window now. It's gorgeous. You need to have three other types. Give me three lamps. Give me a lamp, a floor lamp, and a sconce on the wall. Give me art light. Hang. Actually, I love art light because you can play with them to adjust the scale of artwork on your wall. You can hang one above it to make it look taller and then your artwork can be hung a little lower and still get that really great feeling you're after. Those are fantastic. Lighting in a living room makes a difference. And right now, what is also very popular is rechargeable lamps, and you can put them you know, on an end table where there isn't an outlet. Those are really cool. I have a ton of them linked in my Amazon storefront, as well as a lot of other lamps. So be sure you check that out in the description box down below. Now, if you have made it this far in this video, honey, do not be fake. I know you are liking what you are seeing, what you are hearing, and all of the information presented. Join us, become a part of the La Chic family. Give this video a like and hit that subscribe button. We would love to have you here because you know I'm gonna bring it to you every week. Now I'm gonna give you just a second to do that. Okay, now the next thing we are talking about is the coffee table. You could go so wrong with the incorrect coffee table in your living room, but it's actually very easy to select the correct and proper coffee table following these simple tips. I think it depends on your living room layout, what type of coffee table you need to have and the size of it. I have my sofa situated in a position where it makes sense on the rug. Same thing with the chairs across from it. So I have to have a large enough coffee table for everyone on the sofa, on the chairs to be able to reach it. And that sets a limitation. That's a great way to design your space. Look at what you have going on, look at what you need, and then set those parameters and start searching. If you have a living room layout like a square or a partial square, you have a lot of length on your sofa with chairs on either side. So you're going to need a coffee table that's very rectangular, very linear in shape and long. Maybe it's an oval, but it needs to extend almost the full length of your sofa, probably about 60% of the length. And that's a good rule of thumb to consider or keep in mind. This coffee table I have in my living room is probably about 50% of the length of my sofa. Standard sofa is about eight feet long, so this coffee table is about four feet long. And that feels comfortable. It allows me to move in and out of the space. It gives us enough room to move around, but it's also, you know, large enough that we can actually use it. That is something incredibly important to your living room. If you have a sectional, let's say, you want to turn that sectional into a rectangle, okay? So you take the boundaries you have, the length of the sofa and the width of the sofa. Those are the boundaries. Find a coffee table that will fit in them and you can move around. That will probably be a round or oval shaped table because you have a tight corner in a sectional. It can be a little difficult to find a table that fits that. So if you have to extend that boundary, that's where you want that round table, that oval shaped table, because it creates a soft curve that then feels natural. You also want to have a, a flat surface for every seat in your living room. So your sofa, you want to have a flat surface where someone could set their glass of juice down while they're filming a, a YouTube video. And the same thing goes for every chair. And you may wanna also have extra in case you pull up chairs to the living room to add to the space. So having some small tables or a stool with a flat top on it is great to have in your living room. Just so we're clear, I, 
and my husband get to drink juice in this living room. Everybody else is invited to have water or we can sit in the dining room. Don't play with me. While we're on the topic of coffee tables, one of the biggest mistakes I see all of the time is literally like impossible to avoid unless I designed a space myself, which is the only way to get them that really look good, but that's beside the point. <laughs> is the height of accessories and decor and their placement. There's a time and a place for everything. I'm not that person that says like, you have to get rid of that, it has to go now immediately, it's incorrect, it's wrong, throw it in the dumpster, trash outside, garbage, get rid of it. Uh, I think you can style any piece in the correct place. When it comes to a coffee table, I like everything to be relatively low. I don't wanna be looking around or past something to see someone on the other side of my dining room. I don't need to have like a giant floral moment blocking the TV out across from me. So I like everything on my coffee table to be low. Very low slung, very minimal in height because I don't wanna deal with having a ton of stuff there. A good rule of thumb to consider, it, it's not something you absolutely have to follow. All rules are made to be broken. Just know what you're breaking and do it well if you're going to. But a good rule of thumb is to say, what is you know the height of the arm of my sofa? Keep everything on the table under that height. It's a really good place to be. Everything is low, it's out of the way. The focus is more on the people in the space and the usage instead of the decor on the table. Now, my sofa doesn't have arms. It has a particularly low back. It's actually kind of designed for you to lounge on and sit there and be like glamorous and bougie, but that's just who I am as a person, okay? So I take that height because it's the height of an arm of a sofa, and I run with that. Everything on my coffee table is just under that height, and it feels very natural. If I want a tall accessory or piece of decor, I'm gonna put that on a table or on an element that is against a wall, because that's where I want the height to be. In the center of my room, I want things to feel a little lower, because that makes my ceilings feel taller. But when you have something that is very tall, you put it against a wall because it accentuates the height. That's why we take curtains from the floor to the ceiling because we want to create that linear effect in the space. If you have a really tall vase with you know flowers and branches in it, I think it's gorgeous, put it against a wall. That's actually behind me, you can see, I have a lamp, I have a little statue out there, I have a leaning piece of artwork. Those are things I would never put on my coffee table because they're just too tall. They would create this very high element in the middle of the space and block it off. I want them against a wall, that way the height of the ceiling is elevated and lifted. That's a really great trick to use to play with scale in a space. I live in a vintage home. I have eight foot ceilings. You would never know it being in here looking around anything because all of the elements against my walls are very tall. An oversized mirror, floor to ceiling drapes, my artwork is hung in line with the door frames and window frames in my home, so it elevates everything and it brings the eye up to this natural line. That's why it's so important to understand and know the science of interior design. We study and we train and how does your mind work and what ways can we trick the eye into believing or seeing something different than is there, or we can adjust the spatial needs and the reality of the way they feel. So that's where interior design comes to play. That's why it matters. That's why it's important. And that's why you should hit the subscribe button. You know, we actually talked about height so much, and I think that really matters because furniture height makes a difference in a space. And I think it depends on who is using that space, what the intention of it is, and what you're trying to achieve. In my living room, for example, it's very much my husband and I and our little dogs, okay? You know, I have a French bulldog and an English bulldog. So I like to relax, I like to lounge, we like to sit here and have a conversation. So I want something that's relaxing, that feels really good. So I choose furniture that's a little lower to the ground, that has a lower back, because I'm not sitting here lounging, laying back on my sofa watching TV. I could if I wanted to, it's a very comfortable piece, but it's a really good conversation piece. And when I chose this sofa, I knew I had to find the perfect scale chair opposite it. So the chairs I have are the same height, the back of them is the same, the seat height is the same, that consistency makes a difference. You want all of the same type items in the space, like the seating, to all have the same general dimensions. Maybe they're a little different here or there, an inch or two off, but having all of the seat height the same 
means that everything feels like it's on one level. Everybody feels the same. Having the seat back the same feels that way and the arm height the same. So you can play with what you have, the different pieces. You know, I don't like to get a furniture set. I like to create visual interest by mixing different pieces together. Something else worth considering is the seat height of your furniture. The seat height of this sofa is low. It's about 15 inches. Standard is a little bit closer to 18 inches. The reason this is lower to the ground is once again, because I'm trying to create an illusion that my ceilings are nice and tall, but also my bulldogs can't jump that high and I don't want them to. French bulldogs are known for having these back problems. So, hey, I'm not gonna risk it with him. So I get a sofa he can jump on easily and I don't have to worry about. That's something to consider. But at the same time, if you have older people in your space, they don't want to sit on a sofa that's like on the ground. They don't want to do that because it's harder to get out of, even if they're not older. I mean, I might be 30, but it's not always the easiest thing to get up off of the floor at any point. So that's something to consider also. And I'd say the alternative, the back end of that is I have this lower furniture here, but the seat heights in my dining room are standard and we have chairs that we can bring into the space that are a little bit of a different seat height. And you know, for that temporary situation, it works out well. Just because something works for me doesn't mean it's functional for everyone, so I try to find a way to accommodate everyone's needs. And that's actually probably the number one thing I do in my consultations with clients. I ask them about their life, what's going on, what's happening, and I pull these little tidbits out that allow me to create a space that functions beautifully for them and works well, complements their space, but serves their needs. That's what matters in your space. Does it work for you? Doesn't matter if it's it's like, you know, ready to be photographed to go in a magazine. Okay, that's, that's really not real life. That's not what real spaces look like. Well, <laughs> in my house they do, but that's not the point. So really think about what needs do you have in a space and how can we avoid them, you know, not serving and not functioning well for us and then apply all of these design mistakes and all these little bits of advice to create a beautiful, beautiful space. What is that? What is going on over here? Oh, no, 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 honey. I mentioned that living room layouts video. You check that out right over here, but you may want to watch this video all about why your house looks cheap and how to fix it. And I'll see you over there.